go on my Facebook and yes, accept right notifications. So give me a second to make sure it. Okay, let me tag you. And yes, accept right. The beginning is always awkward. I hear myself. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I tagged you, so okay. this should be good to, as long as you accept it, we should be good to. Yeah, we are good. Oh, that's glorious. And we are, it is 11.58 where I am, so we are. Oh, yeah, it is 1.58. Yeah, so we're two minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on time. So it's, Two minutes early is on yeah. time. It, it, that's what, that's what uh, a lot of people will say in, in the music business. It's like, if you're, if you're on time, you're late. So you have to be on time. Early, so you come yeah. two minutes early. Yes. Come two minutes earlier or allow enough time to, yeah. to come and honor that time. And I do like how all over the world now, since we have the universal, whoever or whatever is deciding what time it is, it's something we can agree on no matter where we are. To be on time. Yeah. To be on time. Yeah. It's, on time. it's very different than uh, before where different people had different clocks that maybe were run slowly, fast, whatever, you know, so. <laughs> being on time, yeah. So, hey, how about we talk about being on time? Because that's something yeah, I was time. so bad at okay. being on time. And, um, the you know, since we've been <clears throat> talking about uh, commitment be, being your word, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, being on time has become like a, um, not an obsession, but I would, um, you know, I'm I'm working purposefully <laughs> to be on time, um, and I think we we've had that conversation before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do you think? Would you say that not being on time is a way of self sabotaging, or not? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine in my Toastmasters group, and she realizes this about herself uh, that she's somebody who's habitually late and she's created that for herself and she's also created it for everybody else so now everybody expects and is not surprised that she's it's late. almost it almost yeah. like a fear right like yeah. a, to to have a self-fulfilling prophecy but mm -hmm. that goes against mm -hmm. um against you mm -hmm. I yeah. remember, you know, you know, I'm saying that because I remember in a coaching call um, that I had with with a, a coach, we were talking about the reasons behind me being late. Remember, why do oh, you? Right. Why are? Why am I late? And I grew up um, with a dad who was always late. <laughs> And I think okay. I shared that on this podcast. I, I used to go to a, a private Catholic school. And when you were late, you would have a, you know, like a, a tardy paper. And then after three lates, you would have to come to school on a Saturday. And I remember, you know, I had a lot of those because we were always like, my dad was, we were leaving... 15 to 20 minutes away from the school uh -huh. and school started at eight, meaning we had to leave the house comfortably at seven 30. Right. And sometimes right. at seven 45 or seven 50, we were still at home <laughs> and we were be waiting for my dad. And then he will be getting up and it's like, embarqué, embarqué, like, you know, jump in the car, jump in the car, but at eight 50, and then he would drive like crazy. And uh, just so you could get there five minutes late, if you were lucky, we would be late. And, you know, which is <laughs> my dad was a judge. OK, but he wouldn't. I mean, I shouldn't even be saying that. But yeah, but like I said, open book. So my dad was a judge, but he was he wouldn't respect the <laughs> the, the traffic lights or, you know, yeah. he would just do whatever he wanted. And so, yeah, so that's. um almost like a trauma of being late, you know? And so I kind of do the same with my kids. Um, I, or I wake up super early, you know, I wake up mm -hmm. at five every morning um, and we have, we leave this house at 8.15 to be on time for the kids. Uh, they start at 8.30. 
but we are always there like 829 or 830 yeah, yeah. or 831. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, um, just reproducing. Anyway, it's funny. How about you? Are you somebody who is uh, uh, on time or? I tend to be very punctual. I, That's good. I tend to be very punctual. And I was thinking about, uh, as we were starting to talk about this on time, a lot of what I do at, as a coach and as a as a teacher in, in private lessons is we have a set time. And I, I think I've gotten to the point where all my students know that we start on time and That's we good. end on time. And that was a gradual process for me. When I first started teaching guitar, we would get to, let's say it's a half hour lesson and we get to where it's, uh, there's two minutes left or something. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I haven't given the student all the knowledge that I could give them. So let's, let's start a new concept right now. And then I would inevitably go over time, but I've, I've gotten to the point where now it's very, I'm very good at starting and ending exactly when, yeah, I, when it's I supposed do. to start and when it's supposed to end. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who are out there who have a challenge with this, I would recommend Toastmasters because Toastmasters is all about time. The, the way a, a great meeting works is it starts exactly at the time it's supposed to start. It ends exactly the time it's supposed to end. Everything in the middle is timed as well. Yeah, and so it's bigger. It's yeah. great. I think I think it's important to uh, to do what we say we're going to do. It's important to you know get to places on time because it's a commitment, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good. It's self uh, discipline for yes. self mastery yeah. for greater results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I notice in myself though that I have an easy time of it. I have. It's easy for me to when it's a commitment to to somebody else like for for you and i so we committed we i don't know if we ever really talked about it but we had this tacit commitment that okay well we're going to do this at noon on wednesday noon my time and so we're going to be there at 11 50 to get ready and so i i do my best to honor that mm -hmm. and and i'll let you know if, if my technology is not cooperating but you know it, it that's that's important to me but it's sometimes not as important to me for myself, mm. which, which is something that, that I could stand to use a little work on. You know, I read earlier something. I think I wrote it down. I need to find it. And I think it will, maybe it will ring a bell to you. It's a quote by Robin Sharma. Uh, he said, um, You can't make someone feel good about themselves until you feel good about yourself. Mm. You can't make someone feel good about themselves until you feel good about yourself. Mm. Mm. Does that speak to you? That, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what, what interests me more is I, I have uh, all this stuff I do for my for myself, but most of it is not scheduled in a way that I would schedule an appointment with somebody else. It's just kind of, I, I mean, it happens more or less at the same time every day, but it's not scheduled. It's not specifically scheduled into my day. Because you do a lot of things for you, like you're very rigorous. Yeah, I'm very rigorous. You're disciplined. Yeah. You've been doing yoga nonstop for many years every yep. day. Yep. Um, there are a lot of things that you do. You know, you have like a, a masterful way of organizing your day. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I don't know. So how does it work? At the same time, you're very yeah, self-disciplined. Yeah. Well, I think so. Very self-disciplined and not kind and generous to yourself at the same time how does that work together yeah uh, yeah I, I i think in terms of there there are a lot of times where I'll, where i'll get something 
accomplish that I want to accomplish. And then there's this, there's this space where I'm deciding what the next thing to do will be rather than, rather than saying, okay, well, I've, I've done this and this took this amount of time. And now at X amount of time, this is what I'm doing. And and X time I'm doing this and the next time I'm doing this. And, and like I said, it's easy to do that when it's, when there's another person involved, but it's not quite so easy when I'm the only one involved. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's something, that's something to work on. That's something to, to lean into. It makes me think here. of the, you know, self-love, like we can, we only love people to the edge that we love ourselves or, mm. Mm. you know, the Bible says <clears throat> to do unto others, like one would like to, you know, the, no, not even that one, but probably the, the golden rule, right? Mm. Mm. Um. But most of the time, the person, you know, we're mentored is ourselves. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the truth right there. And I, I think that's, that's for everybody. Is it, do you yeah. think it's a question of self-worth? Or self-acceptance? Which one is it? Or both? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a really interesting question to, to, to pose that way. Is, is it a question of self-worth or self-acceptance? It's or both. Is it a question of accepting myself for, um, for not, for not, um, honoring my commitments to myself as rigorously with regards to time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or conditional, you know, self-acceptance has to do with conditional love too. Yeah. Because you want to confirm, you want to prove to yourself that you're not worth consideration or right. yeah. that you're not worthy of accomplishing things. And so you almost self-sabotage and do the things to prove you that, see, I am not good enough or... I am not worth. So, so maybe, maybe it's, I'm not, I'm not good enough to set appointments and keep appointments with myself. Although I, I do manage to accomplish a lot, but I'm not, I'm, my self-worth is not the same as the worthiness of somebody else because I, I, I respect their time and I respect, you know. Hmm. Or is it fear of our greatness? Yeah. Is it the fear of our greatness? There's always that. There's, a, there's always yeah. that, I think, with all of us, right? We're always our, that's the, the Marianne Williamson quote, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are the opposite of that. Our deepest yeah. fear is that we are incredibly capable. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. My friend, I was talking with my friend Zippy on Monday, and she quoted me that quote of, she recited that quote of Marianne Williamson. That's one of yeah. her favorite. Zippy, if you're looking, you're watching us. It's funny that it comes back today. Yeah. 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 So that's, and that's interesting that we, we begin this discussion and we're talking about time. And then it comes back to how you, re, how you use your time is an expression of how you love yourself. And I'm just getting to that point in the way of mastery. So as we've, we've mentioned on this podcast before, that's, that's one of the books that I'm going through this year, one three volumes of, of that book. And one of the things that I guess I'll say Jeshua, Jeshua, who's, who's the incarnation of the divine or whatever, who's speaking in first person in the book, he says, well, it's up to you to decide how you will use your time. Do you want to use your time to be in the consciousness of, of what we'll say Christ to be in the consciousness of God, to be in the, the wonder of God, or do you want to use your time to resist that? Which yeah. I think is really interesting. It's like you choose and everybody has the same amount of time. And so everybody can choose what they're doing in the present moment. Are you, are you resisting the present moment? Or are you letting the, the love of the universe abide in you in the present moment? 
Yeah. Or are you resisting it? Or are you resisting it? Yeah. Yeah. By doing meaningless things, things like that this. are not in the direction of the goal that you're seeking right. to accomplish. Right. Yeah. And then as, as a pragmatic thing, what uh, I'll go back to Brooke Castillo, what she says about uh, her her methodology, she calls it Monday hour one. And it, what she says is if you're in a, a work environment, I guess you could plan anywhere. First hour of your first week of, of work, you, you spend that planning. You spend that planning what you're going to accomplish and when you're going to accomplish it. And you put that on the calendar. And then she says, the work is when it comes time to do what's on your calendar, you're not going to feel like doing it. <laughs> so you have something scheduled, you're not going to feel like doing it at the time. So the work is to get yourself to do it, whether do you feel it like itself, it or not, because you made that commitment. Yeah, we're coming back to, to keeping the commitment. Yeah. And I remember in the Ultimate Coach book, uh, like when Steve talks about commitment, mm -hmm. being your word, um, he insists on that, on the fact that if we, the first person, you know, the first commitment we need to um, meet is the commitment that we make to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not capable of keeping that, we will fall short on mm -hmm. keeping our core uh, commitment toward others, to other things. Yeah, there, there is a, a passage in there or a section where uh, I can't remember who's, who's speaking about this, but they said that he was a couple of minutes late for something that, that they'd agreed on. And it, was, it wasn't a, a coaching session, but it was, it was something else. And, and uh, Steve spent a half an hour talking to him about the distinction of, of being your word for, you know, for a two minute uh, thing which is which is kind of interesting mm. yeah. and i think he's he says if you're late at uh, the coaching session with him then it's off yeah right right yeah, so because don't... you're not committing to yourself because the coaching is for you and if you're not capable of committing to yourself right then nobody's going to commit to you yeah yeah so what what do you, what do you use to keep track of time what do I use to keep yeah. track of time? Yeah. What do I use? You know, my focus. And do you know that I don't, I, I think I told you, I don't even have um, an alarm clock. So yeah, that's, that's, what, that's stunning to me. That's what I realize is that my brain is, my mind is actually awesome. Like everyone wow. else's mind. Hmm. And I go to bed and I said, I'm going to wake up at, I don't know, four, four thirty, five. And somehow I wake up at those times, sometimes a little before, and then I try and go back to sleep and then wake up right at the time. So what do I do? Like this morning, I had an hour and a half to do something because I needed to. I had um, two wonderful women for brunch at 11.30. And so I was like, I need to work from 9 to 10.30. And then at 10.30, I need to start prepping for mm -hmm. the lunch. And so I sat down, I worked hardly for an hour and I've my phone, I don't have any notifications anymore. And I love it because I realized that every app came with a notification and I was right. reading this book. I think I mentioned it in, um, in the newsletter that I write um, called Limitless. And one of the things he asked, you know, while you're reading the book, is like pause and then go on your phone and stop all the notifications, all yeah, of them. Right. Yep. And so I love my phone now because it has become silent. Like when I take it, I don't know if I have a text message unless I click on the message to check. Mm -hmm. So I don't have impromptu calls or messages or and same on my computer. So I am able to focus to do deep work. And I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't almost have to track my time. It's just like I am, you know, in the flow mm -hmm. with my time. Mm -hmm. 
So you would even trust yourself, let's say you had uh, an early flight and you, you, had, you, you would be okay with, well, I'm not going to set an alarm because I know that I will wake up. So, so far, like I was in San Diego in January and I had a 7 a.m. flight. So I had to leave the hotel at five. Mm -hmm. I think I put an alarm on my phone for four, four thirty. Mm -hmm. And I, but I woke up before the alarm. So mm -hmm. I sometimes put an alarm, but I always wake up before the alarm. And then I wake up and then I turn it off before mm -hmm. it, 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 um, it goes on. Mm -hmm. So when I have an early flight, I would, you know, per precaution, put an alarm. But I find I what I, I I notice is that I always wake up before the alarm goes on, goes off. Speaking of which, I just got a I just got a notification on because I have the Facebook open, and as we're talking about this, I'm thinking about the way the way those notification buttons are the, these little red circles come up like okay this is it's it's a device to make you think that it's important you can turn it off i don't have them those notification and i have msn messenger on facebook can you and turn so, it off if you're in a browser yesterday know. yesterday it asked to reboot i rebooted it and this morning when i was doing my deep work i realized that i had some dots showing me some icons of people and i'm like what's this and i realized that it's a new msn that would turn on notification to tell me X person and Y and Z and A and B and C are on Messenger. I'm like, I don't care. So I went on the settings yeah. and I'm like, turn off all notifications and it disappeared. So when I think of technology and then I think of, you know, all the wonders of it, the fact that you and I can you know, be recording a podcast, right. being two hours, uh, two hour having, you know, not being on the same time and living those thousands of, you know, miles away. I'm very grateful for it, but I can't help but think of all the ways that it tries to have us hook. Yes. And I think the worst is knowing that they use today, they, they do what they call neuromarketing, like using neuroscience mm -hmm. to have people hooked mm -hmm. on these devices, which is to me, awful, horrible. Right. Especially for kids. Right. And, and young and younger and younger, you know, three, three or, or four. Maybe or even know. earlier, yeah. I see my daughter when she comes out from when she comes from school, she wants to watch um, something. Sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. But the days I say yes, she watch. She's one. She wants to watch a second one, and then a third one. And then when you stop it, she goes wild. <laughs> she cries and yells and and so I said, see, this is why I don't want you to watch it. And but she doesn't control it. It's just the way it is done. You know, they do everything so that the kids are like, and it's, I think it's just awful. Yeah. And my son asked me, mom, when did you start using the phone? I said, I had my phone. I was 23. Right. Yeah. I was and so in my thirties. I told him I spent, when I was your age, I was outside or I was reading or I was with someone. I wasn't on a phone. I wasn't mm -hmm. on a technology. Yeah. I said, go use your brain. Go use it, make good use of it, usage of it. And so it's a real issue. That's not something that um, the thought the thought can steal my joy. So um, instead of <laughs> you know making it dramatic, I just you know work one day at a time. But it's uh, it can be yeah, it can be heavy. So tell me about your, I'm going to go backtrack a little bit, but tell me about your, your deep work that you do in the morning. You have a, you have a routine. I'm, I'm imagining that it's similar to what I do, but I'm, I'm curious about what you, what you do, what you consider your deep work that you, you make sure you make time for 
every day. I um, love Robin Sharma and his 5 a.m. club. So I've been doing that. Um, wake up at five, um, do workouts first thing in the morning, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I journal and pray and meditate for 20 minutes. And then I learn for 20 minutes. So the first mm -hmm. hour of my day from five to six is the best, my best time ever. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I go back to being a mom, breakfast and things for my children. And then usually I drop them off at 830. And then I give myself 30 minutes to, um, you know, just do mundane things. And at nine, from nine, I, I spend 90 minutes doing something deep. Mm -hmm. I write or I, I'm taking a, a neurobiology class right now, interpersonal neurobiology. I do, you know, I, I watch a, a lecture, I take notes or, yeah, some, you know, I work on one of my projects, um, take a coaching call, do a coaching call, but an hour, 90 minutes of deep uninterrupted work where I don't touch my phone. So from nine to 12, mm -hmm. I don't touch my phone. Mm -hmm. It's on silent and it's out of my office. Um, so the first I do first 90 minutes and then I do 60, I add 60 minutes of some other kind of work. And, uh, after the 60 minutes, that's when I get up of my office and for 10 minutes, I just, you know, uh, read, fill my water bottle or drink some coffee or mm -hmm. if it's noon, I can look at my phone to see, you know, if. I have something important and then I can just, you know, do like this. If it's just, you know, mundane thing, I don't, I don't tackle it. And then I come back to my office and I work another 60 minutes. And then by that time it's two. And usually at two, I, I'll stop, eat or not, mm -hmm. decide to wait another hour before I eat. And um, there I can listen to a podcast or listen to an audiobook or what I want to do is um, go to the gym because uh -huh. in the morning I just do um, strength training here and then I'm like ideally I haven't done that yet I want to do two to three go to the gym on the way to pick my kids you know just to mm -hmm. do like 30 or 30 40 minutes workout and then I pick the kids um, like two days ago. It was super, it was beautiful. So we went to the park mm -hmm. for until about 530. And then I came home, you know, quick yeah. dinner. Yeah. And then, yeah. So does that answer your question? Well, I'm going to go back to the, the first hour. I, I'm curious. You said 20 minutes on you, you do a workout first and then you do some uh, praying and mm -hmm. meditating and then you, you spend some learning. So how... Do you, do you time that or do, do you just kind of say, well, this is, this is enough of this and this is enough of this. And this I kind of this. know, uh, the workout I do, I know, you know, I, I, I have the rhythm. So the first 20 minutes is it, I can do 22, 23 minutes. It doesn't matter or 25. And then I know I do 20 minutes minimum of workout. I do 20 minutes of, you know, listen to worship, uh, meditate journal mm -hmm. right and then it's 20 minutes is a minimum i can do 25 minutes mm -hmm. and then i add another 20 minutes or 25 or 30 minutes of learning you know listening to something new having mm -hmm. new information mm -hmm. so it's a look up the 5 a.m club it's an amazing okay. book an amazing method by robin sharma that i i i i, I like him a lot uh, in terms of productivity and, you know, I, I, it wasn't easy for me to be structured and he literally helped me be structured. Mm -hmm. I just answered to his method. Mm -hmm. and he's excellent. I think because he is, he has a, he's spirited. He's um, so yeah, it, there is even a book, the 5am club that I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. So it's deep. It's very deep. Um, it's a thought behind that will lead you to action, I think. So if mm -hmm. you're looking for something to be more structured, we want to shake what 
whatever you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I think the 5 a.m. club from Robin Sharma is uh, a must, a must listen to, a must do. Okay. And then other, qu other question desserts. for you, where do you find time to read all the books that are on the shelf behind you? Most of them have been read. Um, mm -hmm. But you also know that I have, um, I, I listen to the audio mm -hmm. and then I buy the book when I really like it. And so, you know, I'll just, for example, take the 12 rules of life. I know that, you know, I love the rule number nine or 10 on kids because I listen to it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it and then I'll go and read and underline and yeah. So usually when they're here, it means they're read. Okay. And, you know, done with. Uh -huh. And then when they're like this, that's, you know, yeah, I that's have a big, another that's a big you know, one. thing here. I have books all around that I'm working on them. And you know, I, I write, I'm a writer, so um I get inspired, you know, by all of these things, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah. So does that answer your question? <laughs> Not really, but that's okay. Okay. So I want to answer your question. So what haven't I answered to? So is there, is there a time now where is, is that the, the 20 minutes of, of learning where you, where you read, or is it, or is this just something that when you're not, uh, scheduled with something else, you have a book in your hand or, or an audible. So, okay. I have, when I go to bed at eight, from eight oh. to nine, I'm reading a book. So on okay. my, by my bed, I have books that I'm reading. You know, mm -hmm. I, I grab from eight to nine. Um, right now I'm reading Welcome Home from um, a Liban Lebanese Canadian. That is amazing. Um, and then I have um, two others. Um, I have a, a French journalist who wrote a book about 30 people who said, the, the title is, Je ne serais pas arrivé là si, meaning I wouldn't be here if, and it's, a, you know, by, by kind of mini biography of famous people from France that I'm reading. That's very nice too. And then I have um, Amélie Nothomb, uh, it's French too, like novel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm always reading before going to bed. And then all of my, the books that I love, like the Myth of Normal, like the 5 a.m. Club, or I've, I have them on my audiobook. And so when I'm driving, when I'm cooking, so you, you, when I'm doing things, yeah, I yeah. have my AirPods and I'm listening to some things. Mm -hmm. And I am also, um, um, I have to, we probably have to, our time is up, right? I have yeah, we're my we're really school. close. Yeah. I have my kids' school who is calling. It's two thirty-one, so I think I should um, call them back. Uh, that call, mm -hmm. call came in, so maybe we mm -hmm. should stop here. And I have right. to call there, there's the there's the beeper, and we did start okay. we did start a minute early, so yes, so that's wonderful. So I'll call All back right. the school, and then we'll see you next week. All right, sounds good. See you later, Sabal. Bye bye.